this video, we're going to talk about debt settlement, debt relief, debt programs. There's a lot of misconceptions out there, and I want to clarify them. I get a lot of YouTube comments where people say, I'm in a program and I'm getting sued. I'm in a program and I thought the payments were going to the creditors. They're not going to the creditors. There's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to these debt consolidation, debt settlement, debt relief, debt repayment program companies. Before I get started, I want you to like this video because I'm going to also give you a gift that was given to me. This gift that was given to me helped me make decisions in my life, especially when it came to getting out of debt and, incre and, and, and repairing my own credit. Because it, and what that gift was, that was the gift of deciding. The gift of saying that what, you, what I want to have in my life is more important for me to go for that and go through whatever amount of pain I'm going to have to go through to get to it than to just sit there and not do nothing. And, and we don't make decisions based off of logic. A lot of people believe that we do. We make decisions based off of the way that we feel. I could tell you about my eight point validation process, my two phase settlement process. I can show you testimonials of, of how many c customers that we've helped. I can show you all of that stuff, but you're still not gonna do anything unless you feel good about working with my company. But this is the process that you, that goes through your mind and it's like a, a split second. I wish I could snap my fingers. It's like a split second when you are, uh, when something comes to you. We, we, we don't even, we're not even always aware of this. So if I was to come to you and say, hey, I can help you get out of debt, I can help you repair your credit. In a split second, you're gonna run through your mind and I call this like a balance scale, like a decision scale, like a feeling scale. These are the things that's going to run through your mind right away. It's going to be a negative side. It's going to be a positive side. In a split second, the feelings that you have from either what you experience with someone else, another company, yourself, all of that stuff. You don't got to look at a piece of paper and say, well, this is what happened. This is what happened last time. This, this. You don't have to be reminded of that stuff. It's like riding a bicycle. Experiences are experiences and they boil up, they come up and show themselves by the feelings, by feelings. And those feelings will make us either move one direction or another direction. You can have positive feelings, you can have negative feelings, positive or negative. And even if you have a positive feeling about something, it doesn't always make you want to move forward. So what, the gift that I want to give you is number one, you got to make decisions. And then gift this gift, when you can make decisions, decisive decisions, the way you say the pain of not having what I want to have in my life is 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 uh, more important for me to go through that pain to get to what I need to get to without trying to do some shortcut, putting in the work, doing what has to be done. I'd rather put in put my all into that. That's making a decision to do that right, rather than not making a decision at all, at all or staying comfortable with that negative feeling because sometimes getting out of debt, repairing your credit, because you, there's going to be an uphill battle, you're, you, you may feel that it's something that you don't want to accomplish and that's going to be those, that, that negative side. Just think about it. If you are having problems with your debt, with too much debt, having problems with your credit, what are the negative things that are coming to your mind right now? It could be negative things about working with a company. It could be negative things about if you could just even accomplish it. Those are your negative feelings. They will boil up on their own. And then there's going to be positive feelings about how your life can change, what you could do if you had your credit repaired. You could probably be envisioning what that number could be. And you'll have those positive decisions. I mean, th those positive feelings uh, come about. But regardless of positive or negative, there's going to have to be something that's going to tilt you to go on that positive side and just to say, I'm going to decide. And no matter how long it takes, I'm going to get there uh, real quick before I get into it about debt. We're going to talk about debt settlement. We're going to talk about exactly what these programs are all about, what you need to watch out for and helping you make the right decision if these types of programs are for you with these debt settlement, debt relief, debt repayment program companies all of that. Uh, but what you have to, what you have to remember when you're looking at making a decision is that you have to understand that there is no shortcut 
but when you get there, you'll think you took a shortcut. It, I know it sounds crazy. I, I, I remember um, I was in a meeting, it was years ago, with some network marketing company that I was part of, probably about almost 15 years ago. And uh, the guy was like saying, they always drew up there. It was like, it's going to be five years. You know, what are you going to do uh, for over the next five years? And every time they threw that up there, everybody included myself. And I was looking at that. I was like, why did they pick five years? That would be like one year, two year, three year, four year, five year. And I was like, why do they do that? But when you think about it, though, that time is going to pass by regardless. That's the thing is that when people have problems making a decision, what they're doing is they're looking at it this way. They're looking at it as that long period of time because they what, what we want is we want something to happen over a short period of time. But what we don't take into account is that that long period of time is going to happen regardless. So one simple thing that you could do right now is just look back one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, 10 years ago. Have you really progressed? So if you haven't really progressed, or you even got worse, What is, that time went by, it still went by, and it went by pretty fast. So don't think about it, you know, repairing your credit or getting out of debt. Don't look at it as a time type thing to where that, that, that you're going to base your whole decision based on that. You need to base your decision based on you want to get the right feelings inside of you that you're going to accomplish it regardless of what period of time it's going to take. Because when that period of time comes, you're going to think that that period of time was short because you're not going to be going through the pain of what you were going through at the time that you had too much debt or bad credit. So one last thing before we get on to it, when you have that scale, at some point, I call this my, it's like a quarter, like 25 cents, 25 cents. And all it takes is one penny, one cent, one penny to tilt that scale. One decision to tilt that scale, either one direction where you do nothing or one direction where you do something. And all you have to do is to add to this, because some I know a lot of you have tried things and you've, uh, you know, given your time, your money, your your uh you know your i your 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 idea your brain power your energy to things that maybe didn't work but i'm just telling you if it didn't work now it's just working on you if it didn't work now it's just working on you and the more that you let things work on you all of a sudden it's going to start to materialize on the outside because m the problems that we mainly have in our life is problems that we bring to ourselves i mean if you if you think about it and part of that decision process a big part of that decision process is, is to say, I, I'm i taking full responsibility for what's going to be going on with my credit and my debt, that you're going to take that full responsibility. So say that you're, I, I'm taking full responsibility for my credit and my debt. So now let's talk about these programs. The reason why I want to bring them up is because there's a lot of misconceptions with these programs. So let's just say that you are looking at one of these debt settlement programs. You hear the commercials, get out of debt this period of time, consolidate your debt, one monthly payment, get out of debt in 24 to 36 months, whatever it is, whatever it is. This is what they're actually doing. So first off, and we're just going to have this example here for credit card debt. Let's just say that you got four credit cards. You got a 15,000, I got put 15,000 on there. Let's just say uh, 12,000. I don't know why I repeated that number. You got 15,000, 12,000, 7,000, 2,000. These are all credit cards that you have. You got four credit cards. You done blew them up. Uh, the payments done built up. Combined with your other household necessities, car payments and all that stuff, you just can't make it. This is the situation that a lot of Americans find themselves in. So you're going to have a few choices that you're going to have to make. Uh, I would say the first choice that you could look at making is if you can budget your money better. Can you budget your money better and, and work your way out of this? If you can't budget your money better, the next option that everybody is looking at, and it's part of the option is what you actually do on your own, is that you just stop paying people. Just stop paying the credit card. Like I just can't do it anymore. You're making the payments and it just don't doesn't seem like anything is happening. Like it just doesn't go down. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, 
And I've seen this for myself and I've seen this for other employees that work for my other companies that are being garnished. It will go down. It will go down. If you pay the payment, it will eventually go down. It's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, but I, I, when I've seen some garnishments that I've gotten for employees and I was like, how in the hell are they going to pay this? I remember there was one garnishment that was $2 and 38 cents. This is no lie for an employee that I have with another company, $2 and 38 cents. And I, I forget the amount. I think it was probably uh, maybe a six, seven hundred dollars. I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't huge, but two dollars and thirty eight cents. I was like, "You're gonna be paying on this forever." You know what? The other day when I was looking at the the uh, list of the garnishments that I had to sign off on, that person has almost paid that off. That garnishment is almost paid off, and so I was thinking to myself. Really, if you just allow, like if, if you, if, if so, if you have option number one, where it's just like, I'm just going to get myself, I'm going to buckle down. I'm going to discipline myself. I'm going to figure out a plan, a strategy to pay this stuff off. It can work, uh, but you do got to have the income, but it can work. If you can pay on the debt and not add to the debt, that's, uh, that's the secret is if you pay on the debt and not add to the debt, you're gonna be be okay. But if you pay on the debt and you're continually adding to the debt, that's where I think a lot of people see that it's not working when they're continually paying the credit card debt. You have to pay the debt and you have to stop using the credit cards. Uh, it's up to you if you turn them off. If, remember, if you turn them off, it's gonna make your credit score go down. But if you're having trouble paying, you know, paying them and you, you're not disciplined on not reusing, like say you pay a hundred dollars off and you go out and reuse 50 or $75 or a hundred dollars, then it's, it's not going to work for you. Then you're, you're going to have to discipline yourself. You got to make that decision, that, that decision that you want to get out of debt and that you're not going to do the things that continually keep making you get into debt. So that's option number one, but option number two is the one that people are going at is that they're, you know, just stop paying. They just can't afford to do it. Uh, problems sleeping at night, problems paying other bills, and you just make this, this uh, decision based off of your priorities. And you say to yourself, the credit card companies is not my priority. Like you're gonna pick your house, your rent, groceries, utilities, a car, all of, you're gonna pick all of that stuff over the credit cards. And so what these companies are advertising is that they're saying to you, this, and this is what will go through your mind in a split second, they're saying, okay, let's just say that you got all of this credit card debt. We, we had this credit card, that was 15, that's 27, 34. So we got 36K in credit card debt. And you call up one of the companies and they say, okay, we, what we're going to do is we could help you pay that credit card debt for, you know, maybe... Uh, 50, half 50 cents on the dollar. So you're like, okay, well then I can pay, you know, pay this off for maybe 18 K. Like you're thinking that in your mind. Okay. I can, I'm going to have $18,000 somehow. I'm going to get that. And then they're saying, so then the next thing that runs through your mind is I'm going to get $18,000. So they're like, okay, well, what you're paying right now, you're paying, and this is probably a low number, but uh, $1,100 a month. And they say, okay, well, this is this is the plan. This is what we're going to do is we're going to slash that and you're going to keep all the money. You keep 600 and you pay us 500 a month. And we're going to consolidate all of these credit cards. Right there is the first misconception and the first, uh, I, I think that it's kind of like a, a, a bait and switch that some of these companies are doing to people. And the reason why I say that is because people call me thinking that they consolidated their debt. What they've actually done, you've consolidated your debt with them, but you have not consolidated your debt as a loan to pay off your debt and you're paying a smaller payment. So I'm gonna repeat that again. The companies will say, you come to us, also, they tell people to stop paying their credit cards. I, 
I d don't feel comfortable telling people to do that. That is a personal decision, but we'll take it from the point of you made that personal decision and you stopped paying your credit card debt. So it's going to take 180 days for those debts to charge off. And then they're going to, these companies will say, well, you're going to consolidate all of that debt. So you're going to consolidate that $36,000 with us. And, it, and, and you're going to have one low monthly payment and we're going to try to settle all of your debt for $18,000. So I'm going to say, say this again. I'm going to say this again. Pay attention to how you feel. Pay attention to what you're understanding from what I'm saying, because this is going to help you to make the right decision. You call up the company. They tell you, you stop paying your credit cards or you've already made that decision to stop paying your credit cards. It's gonna take 180 days for those credit cards to charge off. They might or may not, they may or may not tell you that part. That doesn't matter for this example here. And then they're gonna say that we can help you pay off that $36,000 in credit card debt, maybe for $18,000. And because you're consolidating with us, you're not gonna to have to pay the $1,100, you're gonna pay $600 and you're gonna pay uh, keep $600 to yourself and only pay us $500. So how do you feel? Right instantly, you're like, okay, relief. Maybe I can get rid of this debt for half of what I owe. That's instant relief. The feeling, that's a feeling. That's a feeling. I'm going to say it again. That's a feeling. The number. The next one is you're only going to have to pay them $500 a month. You're saying to yourself, I'm keeping that additional money, if you were even paying out that money. If you had stopped and it stopped making that decision to pay before that, uh, then then you're, you know, whatever amount you're gonna save is what you're gonna save. But let's just say that you pay them $500. Now you're thinking, because of what they said, loan is consolidated. They said the loan was consolidated. The loan is not actually consolidated. So. What they're actually doing is they're consolidating the debt that you have under their program. So you're, all of the debts are going to be listed under their programs. And this is a legit thing that they do. They consolidate all of the debt into their program. Now, the next thing, if, if it's a consolidation loan, you would know it's a consolidation loan because you you're, all of your debt would be paid and then you would just be paying one uh, small payment or a lower payment towards all your debt. It would just open up all of those cards. You you wouldn't even have to close those accounts, but I would recommend that you close the majority of them, regardless if your credit go, credit score goes down because you don't want to find yourself in that situation again. So you're consolidating with them. So I'm going to say that again. You're consolidating your loans with them, the loans that you have, not the actual loan itself. You're just putting them into a program where they're all consolidated and you're paying them $500 a month. That $500 a month is going into an escrow account. That $500 a month is going into an escrow account. With that $500 a month going into an escrow account, they want to let that build up so they can start approaching those creditors from the money that's built up to do settlements. When they do those settlements, there's gonna be a fee, but I'll get to that later. So the next thing that you need to understand with them is that, you, so you're consolidating with them and there is no contract with your creditors. So I'm gonna repeat again, there is no contract directly with either of the credit card providers. There is no contract with the credit card providers. I'm gonna repeat it again because it's a, a huge misconception. When you consolidate with them, you're consolidating with these companies and there is no contract with the credit card companies. The contract is with you. When you send the payment, it is going to an escrow account. The payments are not going to any of the creditors. So even if they say that they can settle your debt for 50 cents on a dollar and you're making payments, of $500 a month to the debt settlement company, zero, 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 zero. You can take that to the bank. Zero of your $500 is going to your credit card debt. It's going into an escrow account. Again, I'm going to repeat, and you might be saying, well, Steve, why are you repeating this over and over? Because these are the, the questions 
and the misconceptions that people continually to have over and over and over again. And it's because the feeling of being able to only have to pay half of the debt or maybe less and keeping the $600 and the $500 that is going to them when they think that the debt is being consolidated, that feeling is making people not understand what they're actually signing up for. So 0%, zero, zero dollars of the $500 that you're paying is going to those credit card debts, zero. What they're gonna do is they're gonna allow that to build up. So let's just say with the smaller one here, for two months, you did two months of payments. They approached this company. This company said, we'll take $1,000 to settle that debt for less. The company, what they're gonna do that gets into this here. So you got $1,000 you paid for two months and they say, well, we would settle this account for, uh, for $1,000 to make it simple. This company that you signed up for would tell you, okay, you, you, we got this settlement for that amount, but we have a 20 to 25% fee on top of that. And the way that they charge their fees is not based on the thousand dollar settlement. They base their fee based on the over the gross amount, the $2,000 settlement. So they're going to charge 20 to 25% on top of the work that they're doing. And they got to get paid. This, these companies spend a lot of money for advertising. They spend a lot of money for employees to sit there and explain these programs and sign people up. They have to make that money. So the, the, again, I'm going to repeat it again. They make a settlement with the credit card company. You're, you make two monthly payments of $500. This company raised their hand and said, hey, we'll go ahead and settle it for, for 50 cents on a dollar for $1,000. The company is going to charge you a 20 to 25% fee on top of settling that debt. That's the way that they work. And they're going to do that for each one of these debts. That's the way that they're going to do it. They're going to charge a 20 to 25% fee. So some people have worked these programs and they would say to me, Steve, I've paid into these programs for a year or two years, maybe even three years. Yes, they did settle uh, the debt, but every time when they settled the debt and when I add up how much money I had that I've been putting in, it just didn't equal out because it was like I should have settled more of, of the debt uh, because I put in more money. The reason why is because every time they do the settlement they take out a, they're going to charge a fee for it so every time all you got to do is remember that every time no matter what amount you put in there if you don't have enough money to pay the settlement and the fee they're going to tell you you need to either come up with extra money or they may do something that i thought was was i don't even know why they would do it is that they actually had a person go and get a loan to pay their fee and I do not agree with that. I do not agree with that. Now, let's talk about the next thing that is possible. And this is something that a, a, a YouTube subscriber called about yesterday. Is that they said, okay, I'm in the program. I've been paying the payments. Checks have been getting cashed. And I just got sued by a company that was supposedly in that debt repayment program. And that's where I, I, I told this individual, I said... That is the proof of what I've said in my videos. That is the proof of what I said to you over the phone. That is the proof of what my customer service person has said to you over the phone. Is that when you are in these programs, you have absolutely no contract with the creditors. You have no contract with the creditors. And some of the times it takes a lawsuit that can happen when people start to really get clarity and understand who you have a contract with, what type of program you're in, and no understanding that you can be sued. Because I would believe that if you signed up, you signed up with a program to take care of your debt, your credit card debt, they're telling you that you have a consolidation program they're saying to you that you have contracts because she believed that she had contracts with the creditor. She was like, "I they're suing me, but I have a contract with them. I was like, if you have a contract with them, all you do is pull out the contract and show that you have a contract. 
And then after, you know, a little bit of back and forth and repeating that, all of a sudden there's no contract. So yes, the, the creditors that are in here, that are in this program with your debt repayment program can decide to sue you. So this creditor, this one, this one, I got all these, these red marks on here, but any of those creditors, it is up to them to, to sue if they want to sue. It is up to them to accept what they want to accept for the payoff, and it is up to them if they want to uh, ultimately sell your debt to a debt collector and have a debt collector deal with it. And that's going to mainly depend on the credit card company that you're dealing with. Some of them sue and go after people themselves. Some of them mainly just sell off the debt and um, and just don't want to deal with it. it. That's just the way some of them are just not in the business of doing that. So if you have questions about this, go to my live chat or put the comments inside of the comment section. There's a lot of misconceptions and I believe that this is going to help a lot of people. So please like this video. If you, uh, if you have to rewind it and watch it again, please do that because understanding this can help you make the right decision for you, the right decision for you. And again, I want to be clear, these programs can work. It's just that if you don't understand exactly what you're getting into, there could be problems in the end for you, or there could be problems while you're going through the process. Not to say that those problems can't be worked out. It's just that to give you a little bit more clarity about what you could potentially be facing. So put your comments in under the video here. There's, uh, or you can go to my uh, live chat if you have something a little bit more extensive that you need to talk about. Yes, we do help people with debt settlement. Uh, we, it, you know, it depends on your situation, but we have a list of questions that we have to ask you to see if you qualify to be a client with us. We're a hundred percent upfront about the way that we do it. And we do not take escrow, but we do want proof that you do have the funds because we don't want to put our reputation on the line making settlements and you don't follow through with them. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, 60 my eight point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your, the number three scores.com and grab your TransUnion, Equifax, Experian credit reports, and all three scores. If you have debt collectors coming after you early in the game, grab my three-pack of letters, statute of limitations letter for debt that is past the legal statute of limitations. I give you a letter that you can utilize to stop debt collectors who are trying to collect debt from you that legally cannot be collected. You can pay it if you, you a moral obligation to pay it, but you don't have no legal obligation to pay it. And my cease and desist collection activities letter for debt that is not past the uh, legal statute of limitations to collect, but it was purchased by a debt collector. And there's certain documents, certain questions that you can ask them when you do your dispute process. And I give you a uh, debt validation letter to use when they respond, because they sometimes they'll respond and just giving you some more things that you can ask for. But it's basically making sure that they give you point by point what I have in that cease and desist collection activities letter. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the channel, post your questions and comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com.